Okay, let's go. Let's, let's just do this really quick. We can do this quickly, and then you guys will have time to work even. So, oh, you can't see anything there. We need to heat that up with momentum. All right, so an asteroid revolves around the sun with a mean orbital radius 3.91 times that of the Earth's. The period of the asteroid is what? Okay, so this is going to be, which I think we even have some more that we can do here. Are you recording this? I am recording this. Okay, so no, this is one where we can just use this guy, right? Okay, so what's... We're trying to, the object, A is going to be the object that we're trying to answer a question about. B is the reference object, right? So, this is Earth, this is B. What's that? I'm talking. Okay, talk to yourself. All right, that's a good conversation, I'm assuming. I'm trying to engage myself. Easily talk. Trying, trying to engage uh, myself okay. so it don't talk fall asleep. Asleep. <laughs> If we're getting too loud for you, just let us know, too. So an asteroid revolves around the sun with a mean orbital radius 3.91 times that of the Earth. So the asteroid is the, is the we're trying to answer a question about the asteroid, right? Something like that. So let's label this stuff. So the, what is, what is going to be R sub B, which is really radius of the Earth, right? Yeah. So what's R sub B? Um, right there. Right there, look at that. It's, okay, but do I even need that? No. Nope. I don't, nope. right? Because R sub A, it just tells us that it's 3.91 times that of the Earth's, right? So let's just call this R sub E, radius of the Earth, right? What's R sub A going to be then? What's the radius of the asteroid in terms of radius of the Earth? 3.91. Ah, okay, look at that. See, it's 3.91. R sub E, right? So then when we go to our equation, we've got T sub A over T sub B squared equals R sub A over R sub B cubed. Well, look what happens here. We just get 3.91 R sub E over R sub E. So what happens to the R sub E's? They cancel. You get that? See how that's we don't, have to, we don't have to put in any exact units. We just put in whatever the radius of the Earth is. It doesn't matter. Because this number is going to be how many times bigger the radius of the asteroid is, right? OK? So what about the other one then? Uh, what is the period of, so T sub A. That's the, sorry, T sub B. That's the reference period. What is that? That's uh, one year, right? Just one year. Because we're asking about Earth years, right? So then T sub A is what we're solving for. Let's just call that X, right? So we end up with X over 1, right, squared. So that's a pretty easy one, isn't it? Right? Because the denominators both went away. So we just get x squared equals 3.91 cubed. What do I do to both sides? Square root it. That's it, right? Mm -hmm. So you could either write it in your calculator. So there's two ways to do this, right? You could either, and this is good properties of exponents review. We could write this as 3.91 to the 3 halves, or if we want to, we could just do the square root of 3.91 cubed. Doesn't matter. Yeah, you do the same thing either way. All right? Make it a sense? Yeah. It a sense. Okay. So what's that give us? I think I have to actually input these to be able to qualify to go to the next question here. So, three point nine one to the power of one point five is that, and I get what three sig figs it looks like. Yeah. So seven point seven three. Oops. 
I'm filling in the blank so the unit the units are already there. Okay, so we got it. So now we'll go to the next question. Okay, how about this? Same kind of deal, right? <coughs> so this time they're telling us information about the moon's period and distance from the center of the Earth. That's nice, right? So they're just giving us R there. Uh, and we've got some satellite that's in orbit around the Earth, and they're telling us what its orbit is, but they want to know what its period is going to period is going to be, right? Okay. So then, remember, A is A is the one that we're looking for. B is the reference object, right? So let's go back and look at this one. information right there. So that's T sub B, right? That's the reference object. So T sub B is 27.3 days. T sub A is, call it X, that's what we're looking for, right? Uh, R sub B is that, right? Now notice that those are both using the same units. So do I need to change those to meters? I don't. It's not going to hurt to do that, but I don't need to, do I? Because I'm taking a ratio of two distances. So it doesn't matter. Does everybody see that it doesn't matter what units I pick? The ratio of the two distances is going to be the same regardless. I mean, I could put it in terms of parsecs or miles or inches. It doesn't matter. The ratio of the two is going to be the same, right? So uh, we get the reference distance is... 390,000 kilometers. The object that we're, that we're trying to find out about has a radius of 256,000 kilometers. And so our equation then is going to become what? So we got T, we got X over 27.3. Right? Squared, and our units are days, equals. There you go. 256,000 units. I'll put the units in, but they're going to cancel. Over 390,000 kilometers cubed. What can I cancel there? Cancel units. What else could I cancel? Yeah, I could divide each one by a thousand, couldn't I? To reduce, all I'm doing is reducing that fraction, right? Because really all I'm doing is I've got some fraction cubed here, right? So why not make it easier, right? It's easier to type in my calculator at least, right? So what are the steps I'd have to do to solve for x then? Let me pause there for a second, first of all. Any questions? What we got so far? Yeah, that make sense? Okay, what are the two steps in order I'm going to have to execute to get this x by itself. And let me remind you that when we're isolating, we're going to reverse order of operations, right? So here's our regular order of operations tree. When we're solving for isolating, we go backwards. So you're going to have to cross. Say it again. In this case, can you like cross multiple? Well, okay, you you can't, and the reason you can't is because these are inside powers, right? But we can just solve for x, right? If we work our way up from the bottom, think what these are. So this means we're going to undo any addition or subtraction. What I like to call, like my math classes, I call loose addition or subtraction. It's outside of parentheses. Then we move on to loose multiplication or division outside of parentheses. Then we undo exponents, and finally we get to what's inside the parentheses. Well, what's the first thing we hit? 
Excellent, because all this stuff is in parentheses, right? So we work our way up here, check, check, and we get to exponents. How do I undo squaring? Square root both sides, right? Or I take both sides to what power? What's equivalent to square rooting? Take it to what power? One half. One half. Okay, good. So then if I take both sides to the one half power, then that's going to cancel that, right? And I'd get x over 27.3 equals this quantity, which is now just 256 over 390 to what power? 1.5. Okay, last step. Multiply, multiply by 27.3, right? So I'm just going to end up with when I multiply both sides by 27.3, those cancel, and so I just get x equals 27.3 times whatever this is going to give me, 256 over 390 to the 3 halves power. And that's just calculated. So we would just go twenty seven point three times the quantity two fifty six divided by three ninety to the one point five. There's our answer. Okay, so how many sig figs? Three, it looks like. So to three, three sig figs, what do we get? 14.5 days. You should always just take a quick look and see if that makes sense, too. So the satellite is closer to Earth. Does it make sense that its period would be a little bit shorter? Yeah, yeah it does, right? The further an object is, is away, the, the longer its period is going to be. Okay? All right. Okay, we got it. How about that? Man, we're on a roll. Okay, what about this one? Uh, Bugs Bunny threw a baseball around the world and caught it. He would have to throw the ball at a speed of what for the ball to circle the earth just above its surface? Okay, so what are we going to do there? Okay, this is one where we're going to maybe add a couple new equations up here. I don't think we've got these up yet. So if I go to... I'll just cut and paste these for now. So remember these guys we came up with in class. We came up with a couple, these guys, a couple equations we came up with, right? For speed and period. Right, based on the universal law of gravitation. All we're really doing is we're just saying the universal law of gravitation tells us the gravitational force, which is a centripetal force. So we're just taking the law of universal gravitation and we're combining it with these equations up here. Right, No big deal. And when we did that, we ended up with these results. Okay, so let me take a picture of those real quick. I'll write them up on the board here momentarily. Let you use those. That seems fair. Okay, so what about here? So this problem. Okay, so what's going on? We're given the, the well, what is the radius of the orbit of that baseball? Uh, it's just the Earth's ah, radius. Okay, so the Earth's radius, isn't it? Because we're assuming it's right at the surface of the Earth, right? So there's the, there's R. 
uh, we know the mass of the Earth, right? There it is. And so, which of these equations am I going to use? Speed of the object. Okay. Speed of the object. Yeah, that's it, right? So all we'd have to do is plug in universal gravitation constant, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, mass of the Earth, and the radius, and that's going to give us speed, right? So that's calculator work. Let's do that. Okay, so what are we going to get? Uh, square root of, here, I'll go ahead and use the fancy fraction template here. How about, so this looks better. So square root of, we're doing the top equation, 6.67. Remember how you get, how do you get scientific notation on here? Uh, second, second EE. Second EE, good. So second EE. And then negative 11 times the mass of the Earth, which is given to us, is 5.97 EE24. Divided by the radius of the Earth, which is 6.38 times 10 to the 6th meters. So we're all standard units, right? Here's what that looks like if we go, right? Everybody good with that? And then we just hit enter, and that's what we get. So I'm assuming 7,900. I'm assuming this is to, yeah, three sig figs. So our answer is 7,900. Seems fast, but it'd have to be pretty fast. Okay, units are already there, so don't include units. There it is. How about that? So, if you launch effectively anything that's not the size of like a bus or something, probably even bigger, if, if you launch it that fast, it'll go into circular orbit. Yeah, it would theoretically, but what's going to prevent it from doing that? Yeah. Air, okay. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, you know, the. Air friction doesn't seem like much, right? But what you, everyone's had some practical experience. If you just draw on your reservoir of, of experiences, you've had some experience with what air friction feels like at high speeds. Probably doing what as a kid? Stick your hand out the window. Yeah, or maybe your hand out the window. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you, stuck, you stuck your head. I explained some hot. Yeah, right. You put your hand out the window, and, uh, and it's, you feel a lot of drag, don't you? I mean, it's just air, but you feel a lot of drag. Yeah. Yeah. We, we all love you, doing that. I get a little bit. Yeah, I do too. No, grab a little penny, put it on the tip of your finger. I have a picture and a video of you doing that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, it was all five. I had one on each of my fingers. Stick out the window. Right. So now imagine if you're only going, you know, 65 miles an hour and the wind feels that substantial. Now imagine if you, you know, ramp that up to where you're going, like a bullet would be going. I don't know, 33. I mean, we, I think we figured it out, but it's thousands of miles per hour, right? And so yeah, if you're going thousands of miles yeah. per hour, yeah, that's going to yeah. be really substantial. If you're going to try to go 7,900 meters per second, right, almost eight kilometers every second, man, that's going to be a lot of air resistance. So much so that if you were to shoot a baseball out with that speed, it would just, yeah, it would just disintegrate. Yeah, it wouldn't last long. Yep. What's the max velocity of a person? Of a person? Yeah. So the fastest a person is going like that one guy that oh, terminal like, velocity? velocity? It it depends on the shape you choose to take. If you dive, you can go pretty fast. You could go, you know, well over 100 miles an hour. Probably I'm going to say 140, 150 if you dive. But if you're just kind of, you know, doing like they usually do, it's probably, I don't know, 120-ish, so something like that. Well, that's pretty fast. <laughs> well, yeah. To... yeah, I bet if you dove, you could go even faster. I bet you could go faster than that, maybe 180. Yeah. If you really, you know, I think you could, yeah. Yeah, so. Uh, it's around 53 meters per second. Do we have a problem like number two on 8.1? Sure. Is that different than any of these? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So are we okay with this one then? This would be, so in this case, what are we given here? They're giving us a satellite's distance above the Earth's surface. Real quick, everybody have a look at this, because this is one that I can see where people might have trouble with. This. There's one slightly tricky part of this. So they're giving us the, the orbit above the Earth. So how would I calculate R? For the for the satellites, okay, I'd have to add the Earth's radius. Now, notice this is in kilometers, 
So I'd have to change that to meters, right? 537,000 meters plus 6.38 million meters is going to give me the overall distance from the center of the Earth. And then all I would end up doing, right, in this case, I'm trying to find orbital period, is just use this guy, right? Use the bottom equation, where I know, I know the radius, and, and of course, g is a constant, and the mass of the Earth is given, right? Yeah, I know it. So I, I, we could probably skip that one, I'm guessing, and just do one like you're suggesting. Okay. We should do the AU one. That's the one I'm on. Ah, okay, yeah, let's yeah, do that one. I did that one. All right. All right, let's do that one. That sounds good. She's already on it. All right, here, I'll freeze this while I go find that one. I have it written down. Oh, you do? Okay. All right. Payton's organized. Man, that's good. Eight point one, you said? Yeah. Oh, uh, that one. Um, that's and what what number? Two. Two. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so in this case, we've got a satellite injected into a circular orbit about the sun with a period of 16.52 days, taking the length of an Earth year to be 365.25 days. The satellite is a distance of blank AU from the center of mass of the sun. Okay, so in the textbook reading, which I'm sure everybody did, they, they remind you that AU stands for an astronomical unit, which is just the mean distance between the Earth and the Sun. So it's actually a really, it's a really uh, useful, it's a really useful unit for us here, isn't it? Right, because it makes the Earth's distance, the reference distance, one. And we're trying to find out what the distance is going to be for the other object. So let's, let's define what our, what our, we're using just this, this yeah. equation, right? Okay. So then what's going to be, what's our reference uh, period? So T sub B is what? 365.25 dates. And let's go ahead, I'm going to put the units up here just so we can verify that we're using apples and apples, right? Comparing the same units. Uh, what is the period of the object in question? 16.52 days. Good. Okay. The reference radius is no. It's one AU. Right. One astronomical unit. It's one times the distance between the Earth and the Sun because that's what it is. The distance between the Earth and the Sun. Right. And then what we're looking for, R sub A is what we're trying to find. Let's call that X, right? So then we just end up with, you guys set up the equation, and then I'll let you take it from there. So, so what's that going to be then? R sub A, R sub a over 1 AU. And we don't even have to put the units there, right? We just know we're in units. If we put the units there, that's kind of nice, because then we can see our answer will have those units. So that, that's the cube. That's the cube one, right? equals our yeah, 16.52 days over 365.25 days, so they cancel squared. So what are the steps in order? Actually, there's only one step really, isn't there? What's the step in, what's the step to get x by itself? Cube root both sides, right? And then if I wanted to, I could multiply each side by 1 AU, which is just going to give me, you know, what's that going to do? It's at least going to tell me the units are AU. We probably don't need that, though, right? We know that we're measuring distance in AU. So X would equal 
this quantity to what power? Second. No. Well, if I'm going to undo this one, I'm taking both sides to what power? Third. The one third, right? I'm taking a cube root. So it would be two thirds? And that's going to be in terms of a U. Okay. So what do you think? A reasonable answer would be probably something, something pretty small, wouldn't it? It would be really small because look, look how short the period is. One year for this satellite is only 16 and a half days. So it must be pretty close to the sun. Oh, gosh. When's like 2.5 something E20 Did you go 16? Did you do 365 divided by 16.25? Well, what was your, maybe yours could be different. I mean, your your distance for the satellite might have been, was it, what was your period for the satellite? Oh, so no, it should be small then, right? You should have 17.34 divided by 365.25. Like I solved my difference in that. No, but like, so I took this fraction, and then I got a number there. And then I took the cube root of that. Oh, okay. Now, yeah, what's, what's this? <laughs> you don't need it. It's mass of the sun. You don't even need that. It's extraneous, right? Oh, yeah. You just sure. showed me. I did it. I do. You're using it. Right. You're just using this one, right? So R sub B is 1. Good. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. That means astronomical units, so it's only going to be about 13 percent of the second. Did you guys get a prize for that? No, I, I didn't get I didn't order it. What did the presentation? I just wanted to Four. Get it. Oh, yeah. I didn't, yeah, I didn't, you were like really into it. I didn't really care what the prize was. We were like yelling at each other. Let's get down. They were just like, <laughs> they're all like, what's a they're, they're all dumbfounded. I was like, oh my gosh, you guys have no clue. 